This is Business Incorporated. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago. Today on the show, South Africa's consumer inflation rises to 5.2% year on year in November. Tanzania to sign deal this week for $3 billion power plant. Plus, quarter joins MTN and Central Bank's case until January 22. We'll start in South Africa as the country's headline consumer inflation quickens slightly to 5.2% year on year in November. On a month on month basis, prices rose 0.2% in November from 0.5% in the previous month. Data from Statistics South Africa shows core inflation, which excludes the prices of food, non-alcoholic beverages, petrol and energy, was at 4.4% year-on-year in November from 4.2% in October. On a month-on-month -month basis, core inflation quickened to 0.2% from 0.1% in October. And to the markets now, stocks in Johannesburg's main index were at a one-week high after data showed consumer inflation quickened slightly in November in Africa's most industrialized nation. At intraday, the JSC, JSC index was up 1.29%. Egypt also gained 0.79%. However, the Nigerian stock index was down 0.22%. Kenya closed in the red on Tuesday. In the Middle East, Dubai stock market recouped some losses as most of its real estate stocks gained. In Dubai, the index added 1.50% with Emma Properties rising 2.2% after saying it had started business development operations in China. Saudi Arabia's index was up 0.44% with top petrochemical maker Saudi Basic Industries gaining 0.3% and Saudi Kayan Petrochemical adding 1%. The Abu Dhabi index was up 0.45%. Qatar's index edged down, however, 0.46%, with Masraf Al Raya falling 0.9%, and Industries Qatar decreasing 0.6%. In Europe, stocks rallied in the morning after President Donald Trump said he was upbeat about the chances of securing a trade deal with China. Meanwhile, Sterling fluctuated on news that British Prime Minister Theresa May will face a vote of no confidence from members of her own Conservative Party later in the day. Well, Conrad Boussin will put all of these together for us. Hello, Conrad. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, TV. Great to be back in Nigeria and on Channels TV. The European markets have continued their recovery on reports that China's government was willing to slash tariffs on car imports. How sustainable is the recovery on the stock market? Are traders confident uh, it's here to stay? I'm afraid, Jimmy, most traders are not. Uh, it's true. Both sides, the Americans and the Chinese, at the moment seem to be eager to send signals that they really want to strike a deal. But most of the sources for those rumors are not really reliable. They come often from unconfirmed uh, sources in the Chinese government or from the Twitter account of the American president. And I have to say, some of the things that uh, Donald Trump has twittered um, might be meant positively, but it's not really encouraging. For example, take the statement by the U.S. president that if it helps him to make a deal with the Chinese, Trump might be willing to intervene in the case of Meng Wanzhou, you know, the CFO of this large tech company Huawei and daughter of the Huawei founder who was arrested in Canada on charges that Huawei has uh, breached the um, American sanctions against Iran. Uh, of course, uh, it might be seen as a sign of creating confidence and uh, common ground with the Chinese from the US president. But uh, if you really want a rules-based uh, trade system worldwide, a rules-based um, way of doing politics, then you don't want the US president to act like an autocrat who simply reigns into the judiciary because it helps him to make a deal. That's not enough. It might encourage the market in the short term, but it's really not enough to have plans and make planning in the medium term and in the long term. And what about the other big European topic, and that's uh, Brexit? Theresa May is potentially facing a leadership challenge. How are traders pricing that in? 
Well, of course, it's adding to a lot of uncertainty in terms of Brexit, but I have to tell you that a majority of people in the financial uh, world are still convinced that eventually Theresa May will manage to convince Parliament that her strategy of permanently kicking the can down the road will work because the alternative, a no a deal Brexit would be uh, too scary for the members of Parliament. One indicator for this theory is that uh, the British pound, it has lost some ground after, you know, the reports came out about the uh, leadership challenge for uh, Theresa May, but there's been a recovery of the British pound. And also I found a new survey or um, study by economists from Deutsche Bank in London who estimate that the chances that May would lose a leadership challenge have increased, but only from 10% to 30%. So at least those economists at Deutsche Bank are confident that eventually Theresa May will, um, will manage to get her deal through. But uh, of course nobody knows when this will happen, and of course there is, there's a risk that it will not happen. And what about businesses in the UK? Which sectors are most in focus for investors right now? Well, you know, uh, the British economy is heavily relying on services. Financial uh, services are very important. And another very, very, very important sector for the British GDP is retail, what's going on on the high street. And today we got more uh, very negative news from uh, British retailers. Superdry, the uh, fashion retailer, reported uh, he came out with a profit warning and that made the shares, shares in Superdry slump by 30%. Another company, Dixon's Carphone, which is the electricals and mobile phone retailer, reported a pre-tax loss and that sent the share price down 10%. The loss has to do uh, mainly with exceptional charges related to goodwill. Goodwill, of course, is you know the basic value of the operations of the business, and this has been devalued so enormously because, well, the high street shops in uh, the retail sector in Britain, they are facing very difficult times because of the competition of online already, and now Brexit, of course, makes the situation even worse because consumers in the UK are really not spending the way that markets and that retailers had hoped for and that is a big problem for this sector. All right, thank you very much for your time, Conrad. Enjoy the rest of the day and see you tomorrow.